Last time Keith Mitchell won in Florida, I had to go to the emergency room. Because you bet the other guy? Well, I might as well have been that. Yeah, I thought I had a heart attack. Oh they my were like, God. Uh, it turns out you're fine. Well, that's good. Well, no, nah, I would have rather died because Keith Mitchell was just, that was such a bad, you remember that day? Okay, we're back. You're back. Everybody's back. A lot of the top 50 is back. It was a bye week for a lot of the big golfers last week at the Honda, but we had a lot of action right down and through overtime golf. It's never a bad thing when you get extra golf, especially the storyline that came through. Guy behind me was the big one. The guy next to me, though, is the big story on the show today, and that's Ben Raza at Jazz Rest DFS at Shander Show. We don't move states. We stay in the great state of Florida. And unlike this past week, Ben, which we will reflect on first and foremost, we invite everybody to hit the thumbs up and subscribe, of course, to the Odd Shopper Golf Channel. This is huge, so thank you. This thing needs to grow. We appreciate you being a part of it. But weather looks to be much more of an issue this week than it was last week. So let's all talk about Chris Kirk and everything else that came from it. Yeah, I mean, my biggest takeaway, you said it was a bye week uh, for a lot of the big names. I, I'm i not saying I'm a big name, but I wish I took a bye week. I'll tell you that much because Chris Kirk and Eric Cole, who a lot of people uh, had mentioned, not me, were duking it out and I didn't really have much going. So it was a it was a taste of Florida golf. It wasn't crazy conditions. I know Honda is kind of a lost tournament right now. It was entertaining. Chris Kirk almost hit the car uh, when he went into the water. Never I've never that. seen that before. But all in all for my card, I didn't have a, really anything to root on too much. I'll say the one bright spot was Justin Sue. I thought I might get bailed out with him. I had a ticket on him, but he unfortunately came up a little bit short. Yeah, and, and that was the thing where you had all these guys. Like Lowry was the only defined golfer in that mix heading into Sunday. Yep. And even live betting, to your point, or showdown one slate DFS, like any way you looked at Sunday, there was so much volatility, including Kirk. And, and you know that top of the leaderboard was really tough to kind of pin down. And yeah, I mean, it, you're just, you're chalking it up to nerves. You're chalking it up to inexperience. You're chalking it up to just being new and, you know, greater than an experience, like new to those moments. Tough, man. Very tough to, to take away in a tournament like that. But we had some long shots in the mix at the very least. Yeah. I mean, again, you're going to get some funky results from Florida. Uh, a couple water balls here, a couple water balls there. Uh, and you're out of it. Water it's ball, just... though. You you mentioned it. Kirk almost said, like I we talked about this. I, I I've never seen there was no reason for that. No. That was almost inexcusable as the bad beat you had with the rebound prop. That I'm no, not, not gonna that, don't even we're not even gonna poison the odd <laughs> chopper golf channel, which is just, just fantastic right now with that stuff. But yeah, just hit it into the grandstand. Hit it into the grandstand, like everybody else. Get it, do what you got to do, get up and down and call it a day. But you know what? Shout out to Chris Kirk, awesome player. Obviously, he's had his personal struggles. It was really cool to see him. I can't believe it had been that long. I think they said seven Amazing. years. Uh, he's been playing great golf this year, and I'm really yep. I'm really happy to see him break through. Selfishly, I wish I bet him. I did not, but uh, a good way to get the Florida swing started. And now we go to Bay Hill. Can't wait for this. Let's do it. All right, before we hit... Arnold Palmer Invitational, Bay Hill, and the weather, the top of the board, the return of this major group of golfers who were just like, nah, to the Honda. And to be fair, outside of this becoming an Invitational elevated event to higher purse, a lot of these guys that we're about to talk about have said, eh, to the API. So let's not look at, like, this has always been a return to norm by all means. But let's tell everybody, Ben, because... You may be new to the channel. You may be new to DraftKings. You may be new to both. That's fine. That's great. We're going to give you an opportunity to turn $5 into $150. Now, the easiest thing to do is just identify the heaviest money line favorite you can find. We'll get there in a second. All we need from you, a couple of things, right? 21 or older, gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. You have to live in a state where you can legally place a wager. Like Ben, myself, Chris, who's producing, the three of us each live in a state where you can legally place a wager, so this would apply. Except we're all on DraftKings. You, for whatever reason, I'll reuse that Randall book. Like, whatever it is. Like, you, you don't want to use DK, that's fine. But we're going to give you an opportunity to have $150 
in your pocket. Take 90 seconds out of your life. Put your information in. Sign up. Sign your grandfather, your grandmother. Sign somebody, again, 21 or older, in your house who is new to sports betting up with this link. It doesn't matter. And look, Chris is doing that for you. Find the heaviest money line favorite you can find. Hit Ben up at Jazz DFS on the Discord. Ben will get right. You'll you'll give him a heavy yeah. money line favorite. No problem. And some some days are easier than others. If you're watching this on Tuesday, you know you got Kansas Jayhawks at home uh, Monday again. Just just look at the lines. No matter what you're picking, even if it's say a minus three hundred shot, it's thirty to one on a on that bet. And if you lose, you lose five dollars. Five dollars. The upside is 150. It's it's a, a risk I'm certainly willing to take. There you have it. Easy have money, it. as we say. All right. Couple of things to look at here. Big picture, Ben. We'll dive into this. Return, as we mentioned, of two big things. Elite level golfers and elements being a part of what we're doing here. So I think the course is not an easy one. And if you're looking for mid-range to longer shot golfers, it's probably going to be a little more difficult unless you can identify maybe a European or somebody who is conditioned to the tough wind and, uh, and the weather that is expected here. Not cold as much, but the wind as we're expected here. Also, as we talked about last week, nothing really changes. A lot of these greens are riddled with hazard. You've got water everywhere. This is not an easy week. Oh, it's not easy at all. A couple different things I'd say that change. First of all, this is a long, you know, this course is pretty long. Driver, I think, is more important than maybe a technical, you know, of Honda yeah. or Valspar or something like that. But you're dealing with fast Bermuda, punishing rough, alligators, water. You don't want to be messing around in these spots. And then I think the biggest change is twofold. And you've echoed both of them. One, keep an eye on the weather. We can't really do anything about that right now. But you do want to keep an eye on the weather. And then, two, this is a loaded field. You're not going to find, uh, you know, Billy Horschel at 20 to 1 here. He's like 100 to 1 because all the elite players are now back in business and ready to take on Bay Hill. Awesome. Let's. I, I don't want to add anything to it because I think at this point it's going to take away from me being a little absent from the top tier, notably okay. absent from the top tier. So I'd, I'd rather you jump in with your top tier. And there's there's something that has pushed me away, I think, from a couple of these guys at the top. I'm probably just going to, not probably, I'm just going to wind up tailing your two guys that you mentioned reluctantly, but only because you are red hot overall this year. So, of course, first things first, you always want to shop these around. We're going to use DK. Uh, yep. but you want to make sure you're going to odd chopper and getting the best numbers. I think we have to start not because I'm betting them, but we have to, John Rahm has earned a spot in this show permanently. If he's in I the agree. field, we should talk about him. So he's sitting at around six, seven to one. He's just winning everything. I can't really push back on anything except to say this. It doesn't seem, and I could be wrong, but John Rahm doesn't seem to love Florida golf. He doesn't play down here that often. Maybe it's a scheduling thing. He's got one appearance. At API, he's never played the Honda. He played once at Valspar and he plays the players. That's about it. You know, he loves the West Coast swing. He's obviously uh, present in some of these other areas. He doesn't seem to like this. His Bermuda splits are not nearly as good as right. some of the other greens. Maybe this just isn't the best golf for him. I'm trying to find anything to have him be beat because when he wins, we all lose because I'm not betting him at six to one in strong fields. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Anything on John Rom for you, or can I get to my real plays? No, I think your real plays, to a lesser extent, have this bigger concern around me, that, which is why I tried to stay away from the top tier, if you will, because we're all trying to beat John Rom. And to your point, it's not even about betting John Rom. I think it's about finding why certain guys aren't going to win in the top tier this week, as opposed to maybe identifying odds that that could beat Rom closer to Rom, but you've done that. So I'm curious to see where you start. Yeah. I'm just going to, again, it's a, a great field. If these top guys don't win, because you're getting great value on some sure. of these elite players, Justin Thomas is 20 to one. Xander is 22 to one. You see those numbers in majors for these guys. Those are major level numbers. And this is a major level field. I look at both of them. They don't have a ton of history at API, just like Rom, uh, but I like where their games are at gaining off the tee been pretty close. Xander's littering the top 10 board, doesn't have those wins in 2023 just yet. JT, it feels like the puzzle pieces are right there. Waste management gains 12 strokes T to green. 
loses with the putter. Goes to Genesis, loses T to green, gains five with the putter. It's so close to syncing up. He just needs to pair the ball striking with the putter. And I don't see any reason why that can't be this week. Uh, and we know what he can do around the green. He won't mind the challenge. Nasty weather. Give me a guy like JT in his around the green game. So this is where I go back and forth, right? Because half of me is like, you, sir, are a hypocrite, right? Because you just laid out the exact reason why you would stay away from John Rahm. But the other half of me has sponged a lot of the knowledge and information that you have thrown out in any capacity that we've had a chance to work with. And I know that the biggest and only maybe, dare I say, to like 95% reason why we're staying away from Rahm is because there's no value for him on the board. So I get that, right? Like, I get that. However, the two guys that you mentioned, those were the ones that stuck out to me with the number associated to them that that were off. It, it's incorrect. But then you start to look and say, well, maybe it's mitigated by what you mentioned, by why we talked about John Rahm being maybe a little suspect or beatable. So it's not about Ben betting on Rahm this week. It's why Rahm is beatable this week. And I think the same reason, the same rationale that's applied to why Rahm is beatable is now being applied to JT and Xander on why they'll win. And that's where I'm a little nervous. I'm going to tail both of these guys because they are the top tier guys. They're the only ones in our screenshot here that makes sense unless you're just willing to eat a little bit on Scotty Scheffler, who is the return champ, who has played exceptional golf when he's been out there. He's watered down, but not like Max Homa, not even Morikawa, who I don't think makes any sense in between JT and Xander. And again, he's been hovering, playing well. Don't get me wrong. Justin Thomas is the one that I would slam. Xander, I'm a little concerned about. But does that make sense? Is the reasoning in what I laid out make sense at the very least? Yeah, listen, John Rahm, the reason I'm not betting him is because I don't think that any golfer in the world is as likely to win to break even at like six and a half to one. It has nothing to do with him not maybe liking Florida. I think that might just be hopefully a narrative that we can hopefully exploit because he's red hot. But regardless of what you have, even if you think Rom is great value and you say he should be five to one, well, that implies he's still losing the tournament like 80%. I mean, come on, this is golf. It's incredibly difficult to win these tournaments. We're going to have to try to beat Rom and Rory. Maybe you pick them up live if they start slow. JT, Xander, I think are good starting points for me. Yep. A lot of guys still in this range, though. Is there any other kind of top end fringe element that you want to get to? Yeah, I think the one guy that I want to mention here, and, and this is going to open up to the mid range conversation because his odds don't reflect the top tier, but it's Victor Hovland. And I think the biggest thing that people are going to talk about at 35 to one, I think that's off, Ben. And the biggest reason or in that 30 to 35 to one range, the biggest reason why is because of the short game is because of getting out of that rough. It's not blasting off the tee, but as you mentioned, this ridiculous teeth that you're going to have to cut through in order, especially if you're closer to the green. Look, that's like 95% of the field is going to have to go through this. You've got about a handful of guys in this tournament that are not all at the top, mind you, Ben, that I would be totally confident that no matter what, they can get through it. Meaning the rough is probably going to mitigate a lot of what the concern is for Victor Hovland. Everything else, I think you can find reason, including putting at this point, is a guy who has a course history of success here, fresh off. I know he didn't win, But still, deep run last year, this is a guy that I want to target at 35 to 1 because like you with JT, I think you can start to reason that number being a little bit lower than it is just based on what we've seen both history and with Victor this year. So I want to break it down just a little more. I don't mind Hovland at all. I I will say I think that if it's going to be really windy, that that does not bode well for him specifically. And I want to I'll just use this as an example. So last year at API. He came in second, played great. He shot 69 in round one, 66 in round two. It got nasty on the weekend. Mm -hmm. It really got harder. Shot 75 in round three and 74 in round four. You can see the split right there. And I think that that's something that Hovland, it's tough. He's not the best golfer in really windy conditions. So I want to point that out that I think he's kind of a, a catalyst if it looks calm. I like it. If it looks like really difficult, I'm not sure that's where I would go. 
the other guy actually let's let's go into more of the mid-range here because uh, i'll bookend it with the other guy that i have but now we can open up a little bit longer odds here mine's going to be short like actually two in this range so I, let me get him out of the way chris go ahead because he's also 35 to one and i'm playing off of two big things actually three things with matt fitzpatrick the fact that he's comfortable in the wind the fact that he has a top 15 already and the fact that he has a legit course history here so this is familiarity with bay hill this is success that we've already seen and the fact that matt fitzpatrick is not somebody that i would move away from if there are windy gusty conditions 35 to 1 i get it it's an ass but still even if you wanted to break it down ben to where oh if i can get hovland versus fitzpatrick at the same number 35 to 1 i'd lean fitzpatrick there and that would be totally fine because i don't think the the wind or the elements have anything to do or really impact his level of success versus someone like hovland no argument there it's pretty crazy i only have one thing to say on fitzy he has lost with the Irons in every PGA start in 2023. That is Amazing. just very, very shocking for a guy this good. He has to flip that. That's all. No, it's, it's it. fine. But I, I think these guys are towing the top tier mid range at 35 to one. So now we can open it up a little bit wider for you. So I talked about Hovland and you know some of the weather. If there's weather, who better than one of the few guys that played last week in Shane Lowry? Who yeah. is 60 to one on DraftKings? He loves the wind. He loves the difficult conditions. He gained 11 strokes tee to green at a difficult Honda course. He lost a single stroke putting. If he putts, he's the winner last week. No doubt in my mind. Playing great golf, 60 to one. The guy's won a major open championship. Why not Shane Lowry? So I look at him and then even though Decky is a completely different. Oh. Come on now. 60 oh. to one. 60 to one. Yeah, I this doesn't make any sense. Uh, he's healthy, it appears to be. He's not playing great, but I'm not really overly concerned about that. He couldn't putt at Genesis. This is a guy that's got a ton of experience at API. He seems to like it tee to green. He has gained every single time he has been at API tee to green. He's just lost numerous times, like eight strokes putting. You got to live with that. Uh, fire me up. He could have won the players the year the COVID hit and they canceled the tournament. He's shown he can, he can get it done in Florida at 60 to 1. Yeah, I like Hideki. I, I don't have any pushback on that. He's definitely been a crowd favorite here on, on this yeah, show. You love, you love Hideki. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the one thing about Lowry, I don't know why, and, and maybe as we always say, shop around. Would you be surprised if that's sitting at, and I get it as far as wind share probability, I don't want to lose the audience with the reasons why, but just on the optics of it, I wouldn't be shocked at all if we found him at 40 to one somewhere or you know, 42, 40, just because, 60 to one based on what we saw last week doesn't make sense. If this like if we didn't have the Honda right and we didn't have last week and this was the 60 to one odds going into it where we kind of needed still to see something from Lowry in order to get that level of confidence. I don't think anybody's pushing back. There's still a lot of value for him at 60 to one, but it's almost like last week didn't happen. Or to your point, Ben, he's being super penalized because he didn't gain enough off the green and that killed him, especially on Sunday. The reality, though, I go back to Hovland. We're talking about this five, six inch type thick teeth at some point. If you're looking at a scrambler, if you're looking at a guy who can play in the wind, how is he 60 to one based off of that and what we got last week? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, listen, Honda's a weak field. There's no doubt, but I just find it crazy. Say, say he didn't play Honda. This is implying what would his number be then? Like we looking at 75 to yeah, one, 80 to one. one? <laughs> I mean, come on for Shane Lowry. I, I really don't understand that. So no. I, I like this number. Again, you always want to shop around yep. for every 40 to one. Maybe there is an 80 to one out there. Again, that is really important with, with betting here. I threw him in uh, on a three ball with speed and Hoagie. I, I just don't think that if you look at, look, the, the ladder of the three here, I need to see out uh, on this and Spieth, I think, just plays into the fact that he's only played one time and that some of these guys have skipped this event when they've had the choice versus now with this big purse where it's like, all right, we got to play. And I think there may be something to that. All right. I only have. Oh, yeah. You hit your two at 60 to one. I'm just going to drop him in there. This is a guy that we've been talking about through. You know, I would say here or there. He gets sprinkled in every now and again. But you talk about course history. Keith Mitchell likes Bay Hill. 
Keith Mitchell plays well at Bay, Mil at Bay Hill, and Keith Mitchell's played well this year. So at 60 to one, I think you have another option where you can play all three of these guys at the same unit size. And you shouldn't be shocked at all if one of them comes through. We talk about ladders, the 4020s, things along that nature. I think Mitchell is a perfect candidate for a top 40, top 20 as well. I don't mind that. I, I'm not as high uh, at Keith Mitchell as most are. Like, I don't think he belongs with Decky and Lowry in an outright field. I just don't. Shown he's a winner at Honda. He's a spike putter. Like in his, he came in sixth and fifth year. He yep. gained 3.6 and 6.3 on the greens those years. That's what did it. I mean, this guy, we know what he can do off the tee automatic. He's a spike putter. So you want to put him on the card? I'm not going to wildly push back. It's not a, a Ches Reavy situation. No, uh, but if he's gaining strokes on the green this year, right? Yeah, I mean, doesn't like that need to. I just don't look at him as someone who belongs in a field like this in this range. That could be wrong. Maybe he is as good as Shane Lowry and Hideki and Kirk and Thigala and Tom Kim. I personally don't see that, but he's right. a pretty reliable top 20, top 40. That 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 makes more sense to me. Yeah, and I think that's the target here. That 60 to 1 is, is a fine sprinkle, but... Look, you know, I, I think Lowry now now you're giving Lowry too much credit here. All right. Well, Lowry was just a... him. All right. Huh? Adam Scott, he's sitting like 80 to one. Gary Woodland's 100 to like these Woodland guys is a, is a conversation to be had. I'll, I'll give you that. But I don't think that. Look, I think Mitchell has played better than Woodland this year overall. Oh, yeah, he has. He has. Okay. Mitchell has earned, I think, a right to be in this conversation. You just he, don't he... like him. You don't like what he, how he looks. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hilla Keith has earned the right to be where he is in the odds. I'm not going to push back on that. I'm just not <laughs> sure if he's ultimately as good as those odds imply. <laughs> Sounds good. I love it. I man. really hope. If he wins, you can find a substitute <laughs> for the players. <laughs> All right. I know you, you'll be on like the Pat Mayo show or some other shit. And we'll yeah. be like, where's Ben? <laughs> nope. Not doing it. All right. But we have to tell it. Speaking of which, if Ben is ever off, noticeably or or just mysteriously or because he doesn't want to deal with me doing a victory lap you can find him on the discord he does not take days off on the discord we know that by all means look we're going to give you half off your first week all of those faces look at that we added isaiah to the mix yeah. i absolutely love it can we get Gajeski's mug up there please i mean the guy is converting dk subs left and right can we at least get his face up there ben I don't make the rules, but yeah, we got a whole group in there. We've got fantastic people covering all sports. And more importantly than that, it's just fun. <laughs> it's a fun community. Of course, there's a couple, you know, there's always a couple clowns, but get those people out of there. The rest of the people love everyone in there. It's just really fun. We win together. We lose together, throw out a lot of bets. So it's just a cool community and an exciting one to be part of. My wife said that my beard with the grays looks like I have toothpaste still stuck in it. Yeah, it's, it's good. It adds the mystery. Well, I mean, I shaved as a result of that. I was uh, so did I. I, I, sh I shaved. I was on a, a, a real good streak, too, and I'm pretty superstitious. Yeah. And I got hit with basically the ultimatum uh, in my personal life that I was just I've crossed over to inappropriately looking. I had to shave and try to bring it back to reality. It's amazing. I got That's by um, uh, 30 minutes a week. I actually have to look somewhat presentable here in Philadelphia. And I got by. Yeah, with, I know you don't have that half hour, no. but that that's a streak killer right there. I'm telling you, you yeah, build hurts. six days and it's like, oh, shit, I got to shit. I got by and then the wife called me out. It's like, you look like you have toothpaste in your face. So I had to shave. All right. Gary Woodland doesn't have that problem. Gary Woodland. No, he's got race, other problems, right? but well, yes, he's 100 but, to one. Uh, OK, have at it because we've talked about Gary a couple of times. I wrote about Gary a couple of weeks ago as a long shot play. And, and look, I think Woodland has wood has some appeal here. No doubt. I picked him up at Genesis at huge odds outright and huge odds for top five and that returned zero dollars because he came in ninth, but he was close. He gained 9.7 strokes on the approach. Come on now. That is that. Is, I don't care what you think. That is a show stopper. Now he hasn't gained strokes putting, since it's been a while, but when you've got this ball striking, Gary Woodland seems to be healthy. It's in there. He was fifth at API last year. He gained a boatload on the greens. It's worth a flyer. He's the type of guy that I'm going to sprinkle on this week. And then I'm just going to throw out one more while you hydrate. 
Bez is a passion project. Kristen Bezedenhut for me. He's got some good results at API, three yep. starts, 18th, 7th, and 20th. He played last week. He made the cut at Honda. He was positive T to green, which is a really big positive overall because that's usually where he bleeds strokes. This is a tough justification. I'm not sure he has the all-around game to hang in, but he has shown that he can hang in at API and put cash at top 20, cash at top 10, something like that. So you want to put him on the outright board, sure, but keep an eye on those top 10, top 20, top 40 numbers. Not many guys in this field have multiple top 20s over the last five years. He's among them. He is. As is in that group. Now, a couple of others that we've mentioned. Hideki is in that. Keith Mitchell is in that. Although Mitchell, you could bump up to multiple top tens over the last five years. <laughs> Who'd you say? Here we go. No, yeah, just get him out. Get, get, go to somebody else. All right. I'm going to give you a name that's going to force you to either say, yes, I love it. That's a great mine. Or you're going to walk up and leave. Like, I don't think there's middle ground left anymore me, with Luke. Let List. me pack it up already. Right. Like, is there any middle ground left with a guy like Luke List? He is so hit or miss, but he is hit. He's hit here. He's got a couple of top tens at Bay Hill. And you know what? As far as a 40 20 guy, he is a prime candidate at Bay Hill with what he's done recently. You want to look at Quail Hollow, maybe one of the better comp courses. You want to look at what he's done this year, Ben, with two, not one, but two top 30s since actually three, technically, if you want to count Century, since the tournament has, has or the tour has flipped over to January. Luke List at 130 to one is probably better served on a ladder play, but who am I to pass up an opportunity? I mean, multiple top tens. All right. One of like five guys in the field with multiple top tens over the last five years. Come on. You cannot ignore that. Uh, Luke List is fine. It, it's not a, it's not a hard guy to talk about. He hasn't gained strokes putting ever. Yeah, ever. Literally. Been on tour for 10 years, ever. He hasn't gained strokes putting in an event that we have strokes gained data for since June of 2022. How is that possible? Well, that, that's the thing. He's got three top 30 finishes. One of them is a tied 11, top 11. That's not a full field, though. Well, the, the Tournament of Champions is not a full field. You're right, but it's a pretty good field. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, if you're cashing top 40s there, that means you didn't fall off a cliff. Like, no, no, no. I, I, I... All right, all right. Farmers, like you're right. Farmers in the Genesis. Those are, are yeah. Listen, you want to you want to make a point for Luke List. He came in 29th at the Genesis. He lost seven strokes putting. Seven strokes putting that week. He gained 11 and a half strokes on the approach. That is this is astronomical. That, but this is a course that can allow you to do that. Yeah, he just has to. You can't lose seven strokes. No, putting. no. No, you're right. Well, that's why he's 130 to one. All right. Yeah. I hear you. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's run it back here. Final card. I have a couple of three balls I'm going to throw at you as well. But uh, I think you you laid out the top tier by all means. So whatever you have that you want to jam in, you're early. This is a Monday recording. So we have to wait for the weather. We have to wait for tea times. So often do we remind you. Just pay attention. Hit us up in the Discord. We have live stuff. Nice little Sep Straka top 10 live play that hits on the Discord. So, you know, things happen live on the Discord as well. Just pay attention throughout the week is what we're saying. Of course. Easiest way, uh, always, our handles are right there. Follow us on Twitter. We're both on there a ton. Dropping bets, talking through some things, and keep an eye on that weather. Yeah, my final card, I think I'll just bet Keith Mitchell and move on. Uh, no, wait a minute. Not doing that. JT and Xander. Decky, Unbelievable. Lowry. These are the type of guys up top. And then you've got, I think, your chasers. For me, Woodland and Bez. For you, I think that's the Luke Wiss-centric part of your card. So you just have to build it out. Uh, don't be afraid to add. What, I, what I've been doing in these, in these Florida fields specifically, say you play, say you're like, all right, I'm going to allocate, say, 10 units to this tournament. Bet what This is what I've been doing. Bet seven units and hold three back for live betting situations because I don't want to finalize my whole card Monday and Tuesday, and then something comes up and now I'm overextended. These tournaments are long. There's opportunities within the tournament. So I know the guys that I want that we talked about, but I have a couple in reserve that I have my eye on, but they're not on the final card just yet. Yeah, I think that's what I did approaching 
the three balls for me, right? So, you know, Hovland is a guy that I'll take a look at. I'm definitely playing. I have no choice but to play Keith Mitchell on every single possible bet right now, just hoping that one comes through. I love Lowry and Fitzpatrick are the two guys that I think I'm going to target the heaviest here. And then look at a couple of other names, like Lowry I mentioned in a three ball. Keith Mitchell's in a three ball with Tommy Fleetwood and, and Will Zalatoris. I like Mitchell at plus 185 as the tied with Fleetwood as the longer odds in that. And the last one that I mentioned as far as is Corey Connors, somebody who has success here, a history of success here, multiple top tens here. And looking at him is in a three ball, Ben, was probably the best way for me. So I have him in a three ball beating out at plus 170, same, same odds as Thigala, beating out he and power, Seamus Power at plus 180. So I, I like that attacking a guy again, who has been here, conditions, et cetera. So that's kind of how I'm looking at some names that we didn't necessarily bring up, but I think you can still play in non-outright situations. Yeah, again, just keep an eye on the weather. I know I've said that five times. It's really important for all this stuff. But I think we've got a good a good card here. It always depends on beating Ram and Rory, because uh, right now neither of them are on the card, and unless I get in live, they won't be. But I love API. This is a great week to bet some golf. Awesome. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Continue to help us. We'll continue to help you build this Odd Shop Golf channel because, look, man, we have a lot happening on the Odd Shopper channel. And this now is your one stop dedicated spot. Lindy's doing stuff. We have a bunch of things happening here. This is just the beginning. Players right around the corner. Right, Ben? We have a lot of things happening on this channel. Oh, it's about to just get started. I mean, this is the start of big time golf for quite a while now. So, again, if you like all things golf, breaking it down, all different types be a part of this community it's going to be one that's going to grow very quickly and we couldn't be more excited thanks to chris thanks to you out there we'll see you